Yeah, I've heard that from, it was a study done, I believe, on uh, kin or children of Auschwitz survivors, that mm-hmm. I had heard that there was a, a, a level of anxiety and, and stress that got passed down, and they started to see it in the second generation, I think. So I, I can understand it from that standpoint, which actually leads me to the question then, well, I don't know what my ancestors went right. through. I don't know what emotions I was born, what emotional palette I was born with. Uh-huh. How do I figure that out? And then if it came from my ancestor, how the heck am I going to overcome that? Totally. So I want to say something here. And I, I, write, I make this point in Energy Rising, which is that we learn from the physicists mm. that energy can never be destroyed. Mm, yep. It can only be transformed. Yep. Our bad feelings, please hear this. Our painful feelings are an energy. And if we could destroy them by avoiding them or pretending they weren't mm. there or numbing ourselves from them or watching a lot of Netflix or leaving relationship after relationship, we would all have transformed our pain by now. Mm-hmm. But plenty of us are sitting in our lives having done effort after effort after effort after effort. We're feeling very exhausted. And the levels of pain in our life, the levels of irritation and irritability and disconnection and fear and anxiety and stress are pretty similar. Why? Because pain cannot be destroyed. It can only be transformed. Okay. okay. Well, how do I think about my brain? Because you're making a great point. It's like, well, I, I have no idea what happened to my grandparents and my, my own parents. Right. Like, so am I helpless? Absolutely not. But to understand this, we have got to understand what the brain really is. Okay. And the best way to think about the machinery of the brain, of the brain is as a pattern detection machine. Okay. okay. Great. So your brain is quite literally moving you through life going apple, 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 fill in the blank. The future is just to fill in the blank, right? It's a new day. It's a new person. It's a new job. It's a new opportunity. Fill in the blank. Right. So the brain is going to predict it was apple, 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 apple. It should be an apple again. Well, fine. It could have been a banana. It could have been a coffee cup. It could have been a dog. But okay, apple, fine, no problem. A lot of times, this is wildly adaptive. This is why I'm sure we've all had this experience where we're driving home we're listening to a podcast or we're talking to somebody on the phone, we end up in our driveway. We're not quite sure how we got there, but right. So this is that pattern detection ability of the, of the brain moving us perfectly unconsciously automatically through life. Great. So the brain is not really going apple, 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 apple. What is the energy? What is the entity that your brain is really like, what is the apple? In this analogy, it is emotional energy. It is patterned emotional Mm. energy. Mm. If people get this, they will change their life. Okay. You have a core emotional pattern that you have held since childhood. I I do the way I wrote energy rising is I wrote it into eight neuroenergetic codes. So each chapter is a code and it's a blueprint for how to work with your emotional energy and your nervous system. One of the blueprints is what I'm talking about now, this kind of coding that we receive in childhood. Okay. So hopefully we have sort of a a good emotional pattern and we also all have emotionally painful patterns. Well, I'm here to help people reform their pain. The things that are going well in your life, good. I'm trying to help the bad stuff and make those even better. So we all have a core emotional pattern and and you get to choose yours, but it's going to sound something like this. I'll give you a few examples. Things never work out for me. Things never work out for me. Things never work out for me. Or I can't get what I want. I can't get what I want. I can't get what I want. Or I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. So what happens is, and again, remember the way I started this conversation, the entire meaning of your life rises on the energy of emotion. Mm. So I'm going through my life running a core emotional code that's unconscious until we do work like this and have conversations like these and read books like Energy Rising. And so I get into a new fill in the blank, a new house, a new year, 
I join a new workout program, I, I get a new partner, and I can situationally get a bump. This is why people usually feel mm. hopeful in January, for example. But we know mm. that before February, 85% of New Year's resolutions have failed. Yep. Why? Is it because people didn't really mean it? No. I believe people are very honest, and I, I believe them what they say. It's because this core emotional pattern is so powerful that we've got to understand how to work directly with it. So if I get into a new whatever, job, relationship, outfit, I might feel good momentarily, but I will always gravitate back to the core emotional pattern. So if I show up in rooms, new opportunities, new jobs, new days, where I, at, at a fundamental, am running the emotional code, no one here likes me. I promise you, I will manifest the room where there are people in that room who do not like me. Right. Yes. Because the brain is superimposing meaning over reality. You understand what I'm saying? If yeah, I, I told. Yeah. If yeah. I look to the right right now. It is a sunny day. I see beautiful trees and green, green grass. If I look to the left, I see a closet door in my roar shops. So I have artwork hanging on my wall. Both scenarios are true. Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my research and then you can kind of jump in here. But when I say meaning is constructed by emotion, I am on, if I had a million lifetimes to live, I would live it on this altar of human pain and human power because the only way we change our lives is by understanding, regardless of where we are in development, adolescence or perimenopause or menopause, how to work with the energy of our emotions in that moment. So I am a human emotion researcher. We have a paradigm. It's called the faces paradigm. So researchers mm. all, all, all over the world use this paradigm. Okay. And the reason we all have to use the same paradigm is because, Mindy, if you're kind of showing people one thing and I'm showing people another thing and other people, then when we get back together and we have different results in our experiments, well, is it because maybe we just showed people different things? So everyone's using these same four faces in this faces paradigm I'm about to explain. Okay. So we put people in these big scanners or we hook them up to EEG electrodes and we show them happy faces, angry face, sad face, neutral face. Now, the reason the scientists initially even included the neutral face was because you needed a baseline. Mm -hmm. in, in the scanner, you need to say like, okay, I'm going to show you something neutral and then when I show you something scary, we're going to measure brain activity so we can see the difference from baseline. Yes? Okay. Yes. So the neutral face was just supposed to be this placeholder, but this extremely fascinating thing started to happen. People started to have all different kinds of reactions to the neutral face. Some people said the neutral face was just neutral. It was boring. It was bland. It was neutral. And other people started to say, that face is not neutral. Mm. That face is scary. Mm. That face is threatening. That face is menacing. Who's right? Who cares? I am in the business of human power. If we want to influence ourselves and if we want to influence each other, we have got to meet ourselves in the truth of our emotion. So okay. if the neutral face was just neutral, then everyone would have agreed. But just, people are having different reactions. Why? Because of the emotional coding that they're bringing to situation after situation. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the way I interpreted what you just said was that because it was neutral, it, it what the emotion you bring out is the one that, or the emotional energy you carry, and let's just say it's ancestral, like you said, it's ancestral, it reveals itself in that neutral face. So if somebody saw the neutral face and said it was neutral, and somebody said it was angry, it's really about your ancestral emotional energy that showed up in the neutrality. A hundred percent. And, you know, so I, I grew up in a home where there was a lot of volatility, there was addiction, and I got, and, and there was a lot of wonderful things too. Again, like I, I always will say that when it comes to emo relationships and emotion, I don't want to get too far afield, but part of the, the pain of our, our relationships is the people 
who are hurting us aren't all bad. If they were just like a two right. by four case, we would just yes. be like, that shit sucks. I'm out of here. Yes. So it's it's the people who we love the most because they're so wonderful are also the people who are causing excruciating pain in our life. So right. I grew up in a home where there was a lot of volatility. There was a lot of rage. So I got really good at reading neutral faces and, and I'm basically what we call emotionally monitoring. So the reason I became a psychologist is I have profound empathy. I'm very connected to people. I can read people really well. Well, part of that came through my pain. So to your point about a neutral face, I learned that neutral faces weren't neutral. Right, right. Plenty of times I was waiting for the other shoot. I was waiting for all hell. Don't show me that neutral face. I'd much rather see an angry face, but don't come at me with that neutral shit because now I'm just waiting for the storm to come raging through, you see? So a lot of us who call ourselves empaths, who have a lot of deep emotional intelligence, we come to to read emotion before maybe other people can see it overtly. And so neutrality is anything but. Right. So, okay. okay. I, so here, the, I have to ask this question because it's come up in many of the conversations here on this podcast, which is what, and I, and this, you know, I want to answer what we do with this ancestral emotional situation we've been given in a moment, but what happens when people are freezing their face with like Botox and fillers and things like that? And we're not, this is something I've noticed even in having conversations with people. Sometimes it's really hard to read people's emotions that we have created a bit of a culture that has a very neutral face. And what I have found as somebody who's been interviewed by those people, or I'm interviewing those people or interacting with them, is that it's hard to read where they're at. And so what I'm thinking is, that you're going to say is that when the face is neutral like that, it's a mirror for you to see what your emotional, let's just say baggage, your energetic baggage is that you were born with and have been given. Because there's a lot of frozen faces right now. Well, and isn't that just such a commentary on our culture as a whole? It's like we, I always say the most powerful frequency on the planet is truth. Right. And tr another word, I, I, I believe in the, I'm, a, I'm at, at my core, I'm a talk therapist. Talking is my medicine and I'm very, very good at my job. And we know neuroscientifically that we, the reason we think that talk therapy works isn't just because anecdotally it works. Like we have powerful evidence that shows that language really changes the brain, right? So I, I think a lot about my word choice. I think another synonym for truth is reality. Okay. So in order for me to change my life, I have to push off against the truth of what is. And so I think a lot of people rage against aging. So even to your point about like perimenopause and menopause, and it's like, we've all been told that this very, very natural process of human evolution must be frozen in time. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, yes. So so then I stunt my own, and, and by the way, I'm not making any commentary whatsoever about people's, the way they want, what they want to do with their body. I think more power to them. Right, right. 